Hello my friends, Stark here. This is a customer's 1990 Oldsmobile Custom Cruiser and as such it's one of America's last full-size station wagons. This particular car somewhat unfortunately has the poorly designed Oldsmobile 307 engine. Nevertheless the car is in here for brake work. These are GM 11 inch drum brakes used upon station wagons and I think upon police vehicles too. This is of course the left side. Let's begin by describing a circle. This is the brake shoe adjuster lever which pivots here and the foot there presses on the cog of the adjuster mechanism itself which would sit right around here. Now I don't know why but GM engineered this lever as a two-piece design. the advantage would be of a two-piece setup. Do you have an opinion upon that? No? Well, all right. I like to begin a drum brake job by thoroughly cleaning and repainting the brake back plate. We've painted this one in silver and I have two reasons for doing this. First, it's just so much nicer when assembling these drum brake systems to work with relatively clean hands instead of filthy, black, brake dusty hands. And second, it's actually easier to see what's going on with a light colored background rather than a dark background. The other thing that I like to do is remove and de-rust the small pegs on each side of the slave cylinder. Some people call these the wheel cylinder. And those pegs typically get rust. After I've removed all the rust with a wire wheel, then I lightly coat them with anti-seize so they don't rust again. On the left side of the assembly, there's not too much going on with the leading shoe, but it is the mounting point of the longest spring in the set, running from the shoe to the stationary top post. The trailing shoe, however, is plenty busy. It's not only the mounting or pivotal point of the emergency brake lever or bracket which pivots in up here. Now it's hard to see the emergency brake lever because it's behind the shoe but I'm scraping along the lever or bracket. It's not the anodized adjuster lever At the bottom of the assembly we can see the emergency brake cable entering through the brake back plate and coming along here and 
disappearing behind the adjuster lever where it attaches to the lower portion of the emergency brake lever. Well, we've seen the adjuster lever already, which is a two-piece affair. It pivots on the locating spring or pin of the trailing shoe and then the foot of the adjuster lever presses against the cog of the adjuster mechanism. Careful when securing the bottom spring such that the spring doesn't interfere with the cog of the adjuster mechanism and don't forget your small spring here to provide some back pressure against the adjuster lever. Well, there's a little hook at the top of the adjuster lever from which runs a rod and that rod is connected to the stationary top post. In fact it's the first item on the stationary top post. The spring leading to the leading shoe is the second item. Now here's something a little different. The top spring from the trailing shoe doesn't attach to the stationary top post. Instead, it attaches to a hook in the rod which connects to the adjuster lever. As you'd expect, it's a very similar setup on the right side of the vehicle. Once again, the brake adjuster lever pivots on the trailing shoe. We have a very similar setup with a rod and a short spring and then the long spring leading to the leading shoe. The principal difference on the right side is that the emergency brake lever pivots on the leading shoe and you can see the attachment just behind the orange spring there at the top. There you can see the emergency brake lever behind the leading shoe. Much easier to see this side because it's not hidden by the brake adjustment lever. So, left side, trailing shoe is operated by the emergency brake, and right side, it's the leading shoe. Seen enough? Bored yet? Thank you so much for watching, my friends. It's a beautiful day. Time for me to go practice my parkour at the park. Take care, see you next time.